Let's talk about the first period. Uh, the shot differential was um, just crazy. I mean, what was going on in that period? Um, you know, what what was leading to that really imbalanced uh, number there on the scoreboard? Well, we, we definitely started the game on time, and I, I thought um, we had good jump. Uh, we made the easy play in the first two zones, which allowed us um, to get some sustained ozone time. Um, and we got a lot of rubber on net. Um, the shots were, were good, but more importantly, our scoring chances for and against in that period were um, you know, very tilted in our favor, which is a good thing. And uh, unfortunately, um, it was important that we tried to, you know, we need to get one or two uh, in that period. And especially when you had those power play opportunities. You feel like it's one of those games where you do everything that you want in terms of the pregame setup and, and just the bounces didn't go your way? Uh, no, uh, I think five on five. Um, I, I liked our effort. I liked our, our uh, hey, there's going to be ebbs and flows and there's going to be ups and downs uh, throughout the five on five. But overall, I like the big picture. Um, the penalty kill, uh, what we went over, um, we didn't execute on, on a particular play. And uh, likewise, on the power play, we had some looks. But in a back to back um, with the amount of games in a condensed time, um, you do need to make good on one or two opportunities uh, when you do get, uh, you know, you earn six power plays, then you, you got to make them pay. And unfortunately we didn't. I was looking at the shot count there and of the 36 shots, it looks like the uh, 12, 13, 14 line had, had half of them had 18 without a master and getting 12, you know, you got, you just throwing them over the board a lot. Do you think they're, they're really just trying to shoot hard there? What's your diagnosis there? Uh, I, I think they're a line that's feeling it and they play a connected game. Um, they understand where they are. Um, they have good spatial awareness uh, of each other. And um, often they'll play a simple game and their skill shines through, which will result in ozone time and shots on nets. And, you know, in terms of the ice time, yes, they're obviously on a power play, um, you know, but we, we do our best to roll four lines. Um, I do like our depth. Um, we need to get back to the secondary scoring that um, we have seen throughout the year. Um, we saw some last night. Um, and, you know, sometimes that can be the difference in a, in a close game. Uh, this is Nick Porco's first game of the season. Anything in particular you, you liked out there? I thought he had a really good game. Uh, Porks is a guy who's worked so hard um, over the first few months of the season. Um, you know, he came in, both him and Antonio Strangis. Uh, you know, they started on the, the fifth line in practice and camp. Um, they've been sponges to learning the game. Uh, they've asked the right questions. Um, they've, they've been great teammates, um, top to bottom. And, you know, would, Nick Porco deserved an opportunity to get in the lineup uh, as an underage guy that wouldn't normally be eligible um, for the AHL at this moment. Um, and he did a fantastic job. I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm proud of him. Um, and, you know, he did exactly what he needed to do and he makes it tougher on the coaches. And now, you know, we know uh, he can play and, you know, he's earned an opportunity um, to make sure he gets another look um, back in the lineup at some point. Uh, Lewis and uh, Fellaber both out. Do you have uh, timelines on those guys? Close, day-to-day. -day. All right, thanks, Neil. Patrick? Yes, uh, Coach, uh, Nick Baptiste had gone through some rough years uh, before he came into Texas. What has he been able to maybe unlock in his game or rediscover that's allowed him to really start to flourish this year? Everyone's path is different, as you know, Patrick, and um, I think he's a prime example of, uh, you know, I actually had a good talk with him the other day, and we talked about, you know, we were having a, a discussion with our entire group about opportunity and, you know, not letting moments slip by, and, you know, Nick and I talked about, um, you know, he, his last time in the NHL, I believe he played 50-some-odd games, and he hasn't played a game since, and uh, he's not a guy that dwells on it or looks back, but he's driven for another opportunity. And, you know, those can be some tough, tough years directly after not getting that recall. Um, and what I see and what I notice is maturity. I um, mean, he's still a young man. He recognizes um, the window in front of him. And it's probably not a huge window, but he understands there is a window. And he's taken full advantage. Uh, when he came in, his role, um, you know, was to, to bring leadership and veteran presence to a line and penalty kill. Um, he has grabbed every opportunity. Um, he's, you know, forced our hand to play him in more situations, and he's earned everything. He's been a leader on and off the ice. That's why he wears the A for us. Um, and I have a lot of time um, for his game uh, and a lot of time for the person. So when you have that combination, um, it's tough not to root for him on a nightly basis, and his consistency shows up every night. A player like that in the 25, 26-year-old range, a lot of times they, they have some baggage with them in their career. They've kind of been kicked around a little bit. Uh, 
been pushed around to different roles. Uh, how do you get a player past some of that? And that's easier said than done, I would imagine. Well, I think it's a clean slate and it's about opportunity and it's about um, building relationships. Um, we had a great conversation um, after Scott White uh, signed Nick. Um, you know, I, I was honest with him. I said, this is where I see your role starting. Um, if you can embrace that, um, you know, things will go well. Um, and he didn't bat an eye. He embraced it. He was detailed in camp. He was talking to the kids. Um, and, you know, you, you could just slowly watch him from afar and be like, you know, this guy, he's figured it out and he's getting it. Um, you know, and I think that's what's allowed him to flourish this year. Uh, we, we actually played a couple games against him last year when he was with the Marlies. Um, coincidentally, he did have a couple goals against us too. So, um, you know, we talked about some of that stuff. What did he deal well? You know, what caught our eye in those games? Um, you know, how do we replicate it? And I think he's done that and then some. 